Today we are here to answer possibly the most asked equipment question in golf. Should you be playing a wood, a hybrid, or a driving iron? Let's talk about it. Right guys, so we are here today to finally put the age old question to rest and figure out which golf club is gonna suit you the best at the bottom end of your golf bag. Now, before we get into testing, it's actually pretty important to understand these clubs and how they work. So let's quickly cover that. So there's a lot that goes into these clubs and they will absolutely vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. But the two most important things you need to know are center of gravity and head construction itself. So starting with the driving iron, this is going to have the furthest forward center of gravity of the three clubs. What this means is that it will be the easiest to manipulate from a face angle perspective and in turn trajectory and curve perspective which is why we tend to see a lot of better players using a driving iron style golf club additionally while we usually see thin faces and hollow body construction in driving irons the faces do not tend to be as thin as a fairway wood or hybrid and so because of that we tend to have to go with a little bit less loft to achieve similar ball speeds to those clubs as we get up into a hybrid this really tends to sit in the middle ground between a driving iron and a fairway wood from a cg and head construction perspective usually a little bit easier to manipulate compared to a fairway wood a little bit harder compared to a driving iron kind of in the middle ground from a trajectory perspective and additionally although we will see usually thinner faces than a driving iron they will not be quite as thin as a fairway wood so we do tend to have to have a little bit less loft in this compared to a fairway wood but a little bit more compared to a driving iron very very in the middle ground from a design perspective now as we talk about fairway woods this will usually have the furthest back cg highest moi but also the thinnest face of the three clubs what this allows us to achieve is the highest spinniest, straightest, and hardest to manipulate ball flight. And because of the really thin face, we usually have to go a little bit up and loft to achieve the same ball speeds as a hybrid or a driving iron. Now I can sit here and talk about these clubs and what they're supposed to do all day long. But at the end of the day, I know you guys want to see actual testing and that's what we're here to do. So let's quickly cover the clubs we got. PXG 0317X driving iron just came out. Really been excited to test this one. 18 degrees on that. PXG's black ops hybrid again, just came out. Really been excited to test this one as well at 19 degrees. And then we also have PXG's Black Ops 21 degrees 7 wood. So what we're going to do is hit all of these clubs on grass with GC Quad and really just see how they stack up from a looks, feel, and overall performance perspective. From there, I'll kind of talk you guys through the clubs, what I think about them, and hopefully we can help find you one that is going to fit in your bag the best. So without any further ado, let's get into testing. All right, guys. So the way that we're going to go ahead and work through this testing is we're going to start with the driving iron, hit some shots, try to hit a couple solid ones, and then we'll try to work it, see what we can do with it. Then we'll move up into the hybrid and then into the 7 wood and try to do the same thing hopefully around five shots with each club try to keep it quick and simple but also give you guys the feedback that i know you're looking for so nonetheless first club in hand pxg 0317x their newest driving iron yeah this thing looks really good so you know i mentioned earlier when i was talking about how they design these golf clubs normally with a driving iron it's gonna have the most mass forward allowing for the most manipulation from the player now what a lot of companies are doing is they're actually making the soles a little bit wider they're trying to push a little bit more weight in the back low and back so you can get a little bit more height and it's a little bit more versatile not quite a hybrid but maybe a little bit more versatile than your standard driving iron as we take a look at this it's definitely not as wide or as low back cg as something like a title as u505 but there's a little bit more chunkiness what's nice about that is you kind of feel like you can miss hit a little bit and still get some height still get some carry so if we're talking size wise i would say this sits kind of in between a t200 and a u505 it's not quite as big as the u505 not quite as small as the t200 kind of somewhere in the middle a nice blend in terms terms of sizing as we take a look at it down at address looks really good to me I mean the head looks small it looks like a driving iron but at the same time I like the fact that there's a little bit of mass low and back in the head like I mentioned I just feel like I'm gonna be able to miss hit this and still get decent numbers not a lot of offset on this thing I mean honestly the shape's really nice for a driving iron all right, so that one kind of missed it a little bit low on the face, but again, because of where that CG is, maybe just a little bit lower and further back than just a standard two iron or a smaller headed driving iron, I got a decent amount of carry there. 230 carry, 3800, 146 ball, 114 launch. Definitely not landing and stopping on a green, especially a firm and fast green, but that shot is getting me in play, and that's really what this style of club is meant to do. 
better strike, a little bit higher in the head, got a little bit more launch. I still don't think that's stopping on a green, but flew maybe a little bit further, two yards further carry, 4,000 spin, 12-3 launch, 148 ball. And you know, kind of what I talked about, that's what this club is just doing. It's not gonna be a club that I personally would hit into many greens. I think for you to be able to hit this into a green and stop it, you gotta be a really fast player who's creating a lot of height and ability to stop the golf ball with land angle. And I don't think I'm super slow by any means, but at the same time, I'm definitely not, you know, a 180 ball speed guy at the current moment. So that's what I'm seeing with this club. We'll try to hit one more solid and then see what we can do workability wise. Decent strike, maybe a little bit low in the head, pulled it a touch, but it's the same carry. 230 carry, 108 launch, a little bit lower launch, 3900 spin, 148 ball. Pretty consistent. I mean, there's no other way around it. I don't really see this flying further than 235 for me at the current moment, you know, and I definitely don't see it going any higher than it's going right now. Maybe around 42 land angle, somewhere in that window. It's just, it's not going to stop for me on a green. But let's see what we can do manipulation wise, because like I talked about, that is the nice thing about this club. We'll try to hit one high and see what happens. Try to shallow out a little bit, move her low point a little bit further back. Yeah, straight up in the air. Obviously push my ball position a little bit further forward, swing path went a little bit left. That one cut a little bit. So 223 carry, spin was up 4,800, 13.5 launch, 149 ball. So that's a shot that can stop on a firmer, faster green. But the question really becomes, do you want to manipulate this? Do you want to have to move that ball up? Are you comfortable doing that to get this, to get the height to stop on a green? So at the end of the day, as the player at home, that's a question that you would want to ask yourself. You know, do you really want to be manipulating it to get everything on? Out of it that you're looking for so we'll try to go ahead and hit one really low now seven launch 149 ball 226 carry and 3700 spin we'll try to cut one here see if we can curve this bad boy a little bit Eh, not great. It cut a little bit. 223 carry, 4300 spin, 108 launch, 146 ball. I say it cut a little bit. It really went pretty darn straight. Let's be honest. Let's go ahead and try to draw one though. Yeah, I mean, that's drawing. You know, I'm a drawer of the golf ball. I don't really have a tough time doing that. 10-3, 148, 231, 3400. So, I mean, like I've said a few times, if you're a manipulator of the golf club, you really like to be able to do that. You can move it around. You're comfortable doing that. That's what this offers you. Now, we'll go ahead and move up into the Black Ops Hybrid. Immediately taking a look down at this. Really nice. I think it's cool looking. You know, I, I, the graphics are definitely a little busy, but they've done a nice job. It looks cool, man. It looks fast. Sits really square. And what's interesting about PXG is the way they have the face shaped it's actually pretty square in terms of like the heel and toe. It's not, there's not a lot of roundedness in this head. So that's something to point out for sure. But you know, the thing about this head is I just feel like in comparison to the driving iron, I can really miss this thing more and I'm going to get away with it. So that's definitely what this offers you in terms of inspiration, confidence at address. All right, towed that a little bit, but I mean, that's really the difference. As big of a miss as that was, still got plenty of height. I could see that stopping on a green. 13-1 launch, 148 ball, 227 carry, 4,000 spin. That's the thing. That's what this is going to offer you over the driving iron. If I would have done that with the driving iron, it would have been maybe 210 carry. That's a big difference. So try to actually hit one solid here. That one, really low on the face. That is probably not stopping on a firm, fast green. 9.5 launch, 4,500, 230, 152. So like I mentioned earlier, this really sits in the middle. If I would have hit that same strike location low in the face with the driving iron, it would have come out even lower. That was 9.5. I bet the driving iron would have come out like 7, 6.5 launch. You know, it's little things like that you got to keep in mind. That was solid. Very nice. That is nice and high. 13.5 launch, 151 ball, 230 carry, 4,600. Spin is up on this one, but carries in the exact same window. So we got a little bit of a hotter face here. We're probably picking up, I would say, two miles an hour ball speed over the driving iron, even with a little bit more loft. But because there's a little bit more spin and a little bit more launch, it's going the same distance as the driving iron in terms of carry. We'll go one more with this, and then we'll try to maybe work it a little bit. Yeah, that was better. I think I just needed to get used to it a little bit. Different shaft, different style head. But yeah, now I'm seeing the numbers. Now I'm seeing really good flight out of it. 12 launch, 231 carry, 153 ball, 4650 spin. So if you get used to it, if you kind of are able to figure it out in terms of how you're going to play it, it's really nice. I mean, I feel like this thing offers me a similar construction, a similar look maybe to an iron. Just not super big in terms of how it's stretched from front to back like a fairway would, but just a little bit more forgiving, a little bit easier to hit. We'll try to open high and then low. 
yeah, straight up in the air. 13.5, 153, 232, 4,700. Try to hit one low now. Definitely not as low as the driving iron. 8.5 versus I think 6.5 or 6.9 with the driving iron. 152, 231, 4,100. We'll try to cut one and then draw one, see what happens. Yeah, that was a crappy swing, but it did cut, to be fair. 220 carry, 146 ball. Yeah, not great numbers. I mean, that's the thing about this. Like, it's not going to do the curvature quite as well as a driving iron is the best way I would describe it. But you know what? Screw it. Let's hit another cut. Try to hit a good one here. That's better. Not a great strike, but 220 carry, 147 ball, 5,000 spin, 11-1 launch. Try to draw one here. I mean, again, crappy strike. I'm not really swinging it great today, clearly, but that drew 230, 153, 10, 4,200. Not perfect in every scenario, but kind of a nice middle ground. You know, if you're able to find one that works for you, it really, I would say it does everything solidly, but it doesn't stand out in a particular area, if that makes sense. Now we'll go ahead and hit the seven wood and see what we got. Taking a look down at this thing. I mean, to me, this just looks like I could hit it everywhere. It's gonna go relatively straight. I could hit it low on the face. It's still gonna go high. It looks good. I mean, the thing about PXG woods is definitely it's a different style of shape in terms of how they've done them from heel to toe top to bottom it's kind of a squared look it's different but we'll go ahead and hit this thing see what we got that is straight up in the freaking air 14 one launch 151 225 carry 5000 spin so i mean that's where it can be a little bit tough with seven woods if you're a higher speed player is getting that spin in the right window because we're seeing the same ball speed with two degrees more loft than the hybrid and three degrees more loft than the driving iron but we're seeing maybe a little bit too much spin so that's where you maybe have to consider a different shaft consider the style of head maybe if you were to put hot melt in the head you could move it a little bit further forward try to take some of that spin off that's where you know if you're a better player and i think especially tour guys to get these dialed in for them higher speed players they definitely have to spend a little bit of time trying to make sure they get that spin in the right window but at the same time if you're a slower speed player and you need spin that's the beauty of this club is it really is just super easy to elevate and spins a very nice amount once again, straight up, 14.4, 149, 222, 5,000. You know, it's just very, very consistent, very, very easy to hit. No other way around it. I mean, we're down a little bit in carry, but that's simply due to spin. Terrible miss strike. I mean, that was just a crap swing. Super toey, big hook, but straight up. 145 ball, 215, 4,800, 14.1. That's just what this thing does. You can miss it all over the face and it still gives you the height. You're still gonna be able to stop it on greens. At some point, you know, if you're a slower speed player or you're somebody who's maybe not at the highest skill level, I feel like that's all you can really ask for in terms of ball flight and ease of use. But we'll go ahead and try to work this thing. I mean, we'll try to hit one high. Kind of seems like a bad idea. <laughs> this thing's already going straight up. Low faced it, but still straight up. 13 launch, 5,500, 153, 223. Yeah, I mean, because I low faced it, I didn't get the most launch out of it, but still decent. Try to go ahead and hit one low here. That's decent. 152, 225, 4,800, 94. There's really no other way to put it. This one is definitely just the hardest to manipulate of the three, for sure. It kind of just wants to go high and straight or high and draw. And the other ones, I do feel like I can manipulate. The hybrid, definitely not as much as the driving iron, but try to cut one. 14.5, 150, 219, 5,400, and we'll try to draw one. I know that will not be hard. Not a good strike, but definitely drew. Again, 219, 149, 5,000. Right, guys, so there it is. That is our driving iron versus hybrid versus seven wood test. It was a really fun one. Hopefully, you guys learned a thing or two. Let's go ahead and go over my final conclusions, starting with the driving iron. First and foremost, really impressive head here from PXG. I love the look of it. I think they've done a lot of really nice things in terms of the shaping. I love the fact that it's slightly wider in terms of the sole, makes it a little bit more playable. Love the fact that we've got an adjustable weight that is not talked about enough with irons, in my opinion. This thing feels amazing. I really have to give them a lot of credit they have made this feel like a forged golf club off the middle of the face even though it's hollow bodied not easy to do and they have managed to do it really really impressive but nonetheless this thing is exactly what you would expect it's a better players golf club it really is one of those clubs where if you're good if you know how to manipulate it you're going to be able to flight it up and down curve it left to right do a lot of different things with it what it does really well is driving i mean it's one of those clubs where me personally i would put this into play on a course that is shorter and requires precision maybe something like 
less than 6,800 yards where I really need to get the golf ball in play. It's a little bit tighter. That's what this thing does well. I wouldn't hit this into a ton of greens. I just don't get the land angle out of it personally. If you're a higher speed player, you might feel differently, but what it does really well is just keeping the golf ball in play. Now, as we move up into the hybrid, the new Black Ops hybrid from PXG, again, a really solid golf club here. A little bit of a different shape in terms of a hybrid, a little bit more squared off, like I mentioned earlier. You know, a hybrid is one of those clubs, kind of like how I described it, where it's kind of a jack of all trades club. It doesn't go super high. It doesn't go super low. It really sits in the middle. It's not super manipulatable, but you can work it if you're a better player and you get used to the style of head. Now, me personally, I've moved away from hybrids for that exact reason, because it doesn't necessarily do one thing outstandingly well. I personally would rather just carry a driving iron and a seven wood and then switch them out depending on the golf course. But nonetheless, a really solid head here from PXG. PXG always kills it with the hybrids. And in my opinion, this is absolutely no exception. As we move up into the seven wood, this is a really cool club. And you know, what I like about seven woods is you can just really swing them super casually and they give you fantastic results. This thing goes straight up in the air. Even if you hit it low in the face, heel or toe, it goes pretty straight. It's one of those clubs where whether you're a higher handicap or a lower handicap, it is just as usable. It's just going to depend on how you build it out to get it to fit your game. I think for lower speed players, just going with a stock head is going to be fine. You're going to get enough spin to be able to keep the golf ball in the air like most slower speed and higher handicaps tend to need. But as you get up into those higher speeds, that's where you're going to have to maybe manipulate the club a little bit. I know a lot of guys out on tour tend to use hot melt and kind of push it toward the front of the face to bring that spin down. Or they go to a much heavier, stiffer shot also bringing that launch and spin down. So this is a phenomenal club. I currently use a seven wood. I think it's one of the best decisions I ever made was switching to one. And frankly, this PXG model is awesome. It sits very square at 21 degrees, but if you like it to sit a little bit open, you can turn this thing down and it sits really nice and open as well at 20 or 19 and a half degrees. And additionally, you can adjust the weighting a little bit if you need it. If you're somebody who's a higher speed player, maybe you could go with a couple heavier weights in the front of the head and a lighter weight in the back of the head to try to bring that spin down a little bit. So this is super solid again looks cool a little bit busy on the crown but really looks sleek and fast like i have mentioned a bunch of times with regards to the pxg clubs but overall guys that is a test between seven wood hybrid and driving iron kind of showing you guys what these clubs do differently what they do well what they maybe don't do so well me personally what i really like to do is carry both a driving iron and a seven wood it allows me to have the best of both worlds and with the events i'm playing i tend to play practice rounds and i can decide which one i'm going to use after seeing the golf course in my practice round but if you're somebody who really does doesn't want to have to switch stuff out that's where the hybrid is really going to be that jack of all trades club like i mentioned earlier hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a like comment if you have any questions at all make sure you're subscribed to the youtube channel and you click that notification bell so you're notified anytime that we post a new video additionally make sure you're following us on our other social media channels instagram facebook twitter and tiktok always great content on those channels as well we'll catch you in the next video peace